Convergence. What even is convergence? You may wonder, you may think. What is convergence, she says. What is convergence, she wonders, staring out blankly. What is convergence? Convergence is when two or more things come together and involve, evolve. <laughs> convergence is when two or more things Two or more things come together. Yay! Hi everyone. What is up? During this quarantine time, I've definitely been taking advantage of social media, at every single app. Um, it seems like that's all I do. It, I definitely spend most of my time, unfortunately, on YouTube and TikTok and Instagram, Twitter. Basically been living, I feel like, through convergence. Like everything in my life is convergence right now. So it's kind of like the perfect time for this project if that's a thing. Convergence! Because of how much use, how much time, effort, I don't, what am I saying? I wanted to make this video kind of like a little like day in the life of me plus how Convergence fits into that, if that makes sense. It will make sense because you're already watching the video, so you're, you're on your way. Or get a Convergence. What is that? Organic convergence is when somebody is using more than one medium at the same time. For me, this easiest example that I can think of would be many times like I'll be doing my homework, but the TV is on in the background and I'm actually listening to music on my laptop. Or, like, why is my TV on if I'm listening to music? I don't know, but that's how it goes. And that's convergence, that's organic convergence. In one of the readings we read in class titled Understanding Media and Culture, in the chapter 1.4 titled Convergence, it states, Today's media consumers still watch television, listen to radio, read newspapers, and become immersed in movies. The difference is that it's now possible to do all those things through one device. Be it a personal computer or a smartphone and through the internet. In an article we read in class by Henry Jenkins titled The Cultural Logic of Media Convergence, he states, Media convergence is more than simply a technological shift. And then he goes on to say, our cell phones are not simply telecommunicator devices. They also allow us to play games, download information from the internet, and receive and send photographs or text messages. Any of these functions can also be performed through other media appliances. Our cell phones are not simply telecommunicator devices. They also allow us to play games, download information from the internet, and send or receive text messages. Any of these functions can also be performed through other media appliances. The idea that Jenkins mentions here is also can be called technical convergence. So for this, it's like any sort of example of using a technological device for something that it wouldn't normally be used for. Like watching Netflix on your phone rather than the TV or playing a video game on a cell phone rather than like a console or listening to music from not just the radio, but also your phone. Jenkins also says that we expand the potential relationships between them, meaning mediums, and then enable them to flow through platforms. What he means by this is that we expand our potential relationships between different technological devices that we use and how if I'm more comfortable watching TV on my phone or my laptop, I would be less likely to watch the show on a TV. The potential relationships between them mean they're not made to have these relationships. An example in quarantine of technological convergence could be how my boyfriend's sister's boyfriend has been playing Fortnite this entire quarantine, it seems like, and she's like fed up with him not paying attention to her. So rather than her making a problem about him playing video games on the TV, meaning that she cannot watch the TV, she just downloaded Fortnite on her phone and is now maybe even more obsessed with the game than he is. Technological convergence allows us to be able to take advantage of these things like video games or TV shows or music or whatever kind of thing that you're using. We're able to use those things without necessarily having the device that we need for that one thing. Cultural convergence is one that seems to resonate with me the most just because I feel like it's the easiest to comprehend and understand based on the things that I enjoy or participate in, no pun intended. 
um, on a daily basis. So basically, cultural convergence is broken up into a bunch of different aspects. According to the Understanding Media and Cultural Reading, in chapter 1.4 Convergence, it states, one of the aspects of cultural convergence is participatory culture. Participatory culture is when media consumers are actually able to take ideas, content. If a media consumer is able to comment on something or duet something or repost something or buy something, make something, remake something or parody something, that's considered participatory culture. For me, the easiest, the quickest thing that comes to my mind when I think about participatory culture is TikTok. The entire idea of TikTok is these trends in ideas that everybody seems to be picking up on. Recently, I was watching TikTok and I keep seeing this thing everywhere that I'm sure if you guys have the app, then you would also see this, but it's called Whipped Coffee. But it looks really fun the way that people make it look. They put it in like these nice glass jars with like a reusable straw and an aesthetically pleasing background. They take a sip and they're like, oh my God, this is amazing. You have to try it. Right before you know it, everybody on TikTok is making whipped coffee. And then it became a thing that I watched on YouTube. And then all these YouTubers that I saw were like making the TikTok coffee. A YouTube video that I saw recently actually is by a YouTuber named Amari Stewart. Okay, so while we whisk, what should we talk about? How's everyone been doing since, you know, the incident? Ooh. He cooking anything? Stay in the kitchen cooking up. Y'all. Fuck. Do you want to try this? It's Wow. Damn, girl. Wait, it tastes like um, Lucky Charms. It's so good. Me being myself, of course I tried the whipped coffee. I'm gonna actually show you guys a little clip of me doing it because I was so miserable and I feel like you need to experience that with me while it's happening. <laughs> Would I have done this if I did not see this on YouTube? Probably not. But because I was able to, like it was something that I could go get and try and do and participate in. And if I could be doing the same exact thing that this person does that I watch all the time, then why would I not want to try it? And it just has that like inclusion feeling of media consumers to the people that they watch or admire or view or all these influencers that have these fans, like participatory culture gives them a sense of them involved in this this star or this famous person or whatever cultural convergence i found an article online titled transmedia storytelling in television 2.0 and basically it goes over a little bit more in depth on economic convergence because for me that was like the toughest one to wrap my head around or like really truly understand in context basically it's when like a massive company owns multiple media outlets in this article defined as the domination of mainstream media outlets by corporate conglomerates makes maintaining and nurturing a franchise extra easy that wasn't word for word but basically that is what this article defines economic convergence as i was like getting sick of netflix sick of hulu i feel like i watched the same shows over and over and over again so my roommate has a Disney Plus account. So I asked her for the login and she gave it to me. And when I logged in, I was like mind blown by all the things that Disney owned. And I had no idea. For example, I had no idea that Disney owned all of Marvel. Marvel is this ginormous universe for superheroes. So by Disney owning that, that's ensuring them that nobody's gonna make a superhero that's like too similar to a Disney character or a marvel character because they already own all of this information so it will be extremely extremely hard for somebody to take that away from them or copy them or make some sort of problem but basically economic convergence can be described as the domination of mainstream media outlets by one corporation henry jenkins makes a really interesting point in one of his books titled convergence culture 
where old and new media collide. He talks about how corporations kind of figured out that people don't want to watch commercials anymore. We're really good at avoiding them. Netflix has none, so why would I watch regular TV anymore? Or why would I pay for another streaming service when one has commercials and one doesn't? Obviously, you're going to pick the one that doesn't. Corporations and companies have become really creative around this thing, and this is another example of economic convergence. If you can relate an emotional attachment with a product, then we're going to be way more likely to buy it or to watch the commercial or to look up that product. And that's basically the success of economic convergence, if that makes sense. That's the one. Global convergence is the process of geographically distant cultures influencing one another despite the distance that physically separates them. Global convergence is a little bit more tricky in my brain, at least. Global convergence can be described as, um, like, when I think of global convergence, the first thing that comes to my mind is, um, you already know about it, TikTok. TikTok came out and I believe it was called Musical.ly. It's this app for voiceovers or like lip syncing created in Beijing. However, now like all kinds of TikTok stars now and they have like millions and millions of followers. Charlie D'Amelio, she's like the number one TikTok star. She has like 40 million followers, but every single day this girl gains a million followers. TikTok is a wonderful example of global convergence because it started in China, but yet it's this massive platform in the United States. There's now like an immense amount of American celebrities on here now becoming influencers and now we follow them on Instagram and YouTube and all of these things because once you have one platform, it's super easy to get all those people to follow you on another platform. TikTok, it's taking over and it's everything. Everything in my life is TikTok. <laughs>